watching this video, you're interested in doing the CSL airbox conversion for the E46M3. As you know, there's two routes you can do. You can do the alpha in-tune or the CSL map conversion. We're gonna go over the differences and show you why and how we went with the CSL map conversion. So, you have your new CSL airbox. Now what to do about the ECU? The CSL airbox deletes the OEM MAF sensor, which is used to make adjustments to engine operation based on different variables affecting oxygen flow. Therefore, the ECU must be changed to either run without the MAF or to utilize the CSL MAP sensor, which was used on the OEM CSL. Which do you do? There's two main options. Get in, let's take a ride. We're gonna go over the differences between the two. So alpha in tune. Let's go over some pros and cons. A few pros with the alpha in tune. It may offer superior performance in optimal conditions when a quality custom tune is used. Another nice part about it is the ECU only needs to be flashed by the tuner. However, for superior performance, it will require dyno tuning, which will cost. Which leads us into our cons. As said before, custom tuning can be pricey. Another problem with the Alpha N is that the ECU only runs one tune, and without a MAF or a CSL MAP, it cannot make adjustments for variable conditions and real-time oxygen flow. Therefore, the engine will run poorly if those optimal conditions are not met. So we know the Alpha N tune is a great choice for performance. We know it also gets a little expensive. So let's look at a more affordable option that's also more streetable, the CSL MAP conversion. The CSL MAP conversion. It maintains OEM drivability because the ECU can calculate real-time engine flow from the CSL MAP sensor on the air rail. Using these calculations, it can make adjustments for variable conditions. And just like an Alpha N tune, custom tunes for headers and other modifications are all possible. It performs very well. Of course, it doesn't come without its drawbacks. The CSL MAT conversion requires you to have an MSS 54 HP ECU, which can then be converted to the CSL ECU to operate. It also requires some modifications to the air rail and also some additional wiring from the MAP sensor into the ECU, which of course is all in the kit. To perform the full CSL conversion, you'll need to confirm that you have the HP ECU. When we compare this to our old one, we see that we had the regular MSS 54. If your M3 came with the HP ECU, what you can do is send it to a tuner like Castle Performance, and they'll perform the CSL conversion on the ECU and then tune it for any modifications you may have made. You also need to purchase the CSL map and wiring kit. What this will allow you to do is run the CSL map off your existing air rail. So we've got our kit, we're ready for install. We're gonna start by removing the cabin air filter and the strut tower brace. Before removing your ECU, you'll want to go ahead and disconnect your battery cables. With the ECU, you want to remove the cover first. One, two, three, and four screws. Before removing the ECU, you'll need to remove all five wiring connectors. We've numbered them for your benefit in case you're worried about where they go. to remove the ECU. There's two clips you need to push back and that will allow you to pull the ECU out. You have an HP ECU for your CSL conversion. The ECU out 
you can now route the wiring for your CSL MAP sensor. The sensor is going to land just above the second throttle body here. The wire will then plug in and then run right through here behind the air box and we'll make the transition with this hose. So you can secure it just like that and that will pop down into that groove. Continuing forward, we're then gonna run the wiring through this fitting and secure it with a tie wrap. And that will fit just like that. And now your wiring is directly into the ECU box. Take note, by using this fitting, we maintain the waterproof integrity of our ECU box. So this is a very good choice. With your CSL map sensor wiring routed into the ECU boxes so, you now need to connect it to the ECU. To do so, locate your 52 pin connector. If you recall, we labeled it number three and it resides in the middle of the ECU. There's only one like it. With your 52 pin connector, you'll notice there's a gray portion. You need to separate that from the main plug. You'll notice a small black tab just to the side of it. So what you'll do is push this tab over and then using your pick, rotate the plug out. And then it comes right out. On your gray connector plug, there's three important pins to locate. You'll notice on the first side, the numbers one and 13 with the arrow going left. The first pin that you need to locate is pin number seven. So we count over one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which we've marked for you. This corresponds to a red and green wire. Turn the gray connector plug over. There's two more important pins for us to locate. On this side, you'll notice the arrow going right and the numbers 14 to 26. The first important pin for us to locate is pin number 16. So we have 14, 15, and 16. You'll notice the slot is empty for you to plug into. We continue to count for pin number 18. 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, which we've marked. It is also empty for you to plug into. Now that we have our important pin locations, we're gonna wire in the factory harness. The first pin we're gonna wire into is pin number seven, which corresponds to our red and green wire on the supplied harness, and also to the factory red and green wire. So we're gonna use this wire and tap in. The way this will work, you have your red and green wire, your supplied connector, the wire will slide in right there, and it will close. When it's closed, Your supplied harnesses red and green wire will plug in directly right there. Green wire get some heat shrink to insulate the spade. With it plugged in, cover the spade and just over the connector. Moving on from number seven, we can do our easy ones now. First is number 16 which corresponds to our ground wire, which is orange and brown. You notice these plug in a certain way. There's a little spring on top, and that's gonna insert face up, as so. With 16 in, we can now plug the yellow wire, which corresponds to pin 18. This is your signal wire. Again, spring clip is face up. and it's gonna click in to be plugged into the ECU. Now your CSL converted ECU can go in. Tabs lock it in place. Beginning with number five, we can begin plugging the connectors into the ECU.
double check to make sure they're all well connected. When each one inserts, you'll feel a click. With all the wiring cleaned up, pack your wires intelligently and the cover can go back on. Make sure everything lines up. The two tabs in the back don't like to go on. And it hinges down. Check them to make sure you have a good seal. To install the CSL map sensor, we're going to need to remove this air rail. Unplug this, and then you have two 10 millimeters on each side, and this lifts up. Start at the rear, make sure everything's lined up good. And it sinks on. You can tighten down your two 10 millimeters on the air rail. Let's take a look at our final wiring route. Begins here, the zip tie here, here, here. We're secure and watertight. Everything is reconnected, looks good. This can go back together now. Oops, oily fingers.